Indiana Jones is back in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. You don't need to have seen Crystal Skull to get this. If you didn't, that's probably for the better. Yeah, for everyone. I, the, the, I think the, 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 the franchise is riding on that one. Uh, no, yeah, so, yes. So, <laughs> so uh, here we are with this review. It's a non-spoiler review. Yes. Um, I, we would love it if you'd subscribe and come hang out with us all summer long as we do all the big blockbusters. Um, yes, this is a movie that you guys all have very strong feelings about, it appears, even though it does not even come out until next <laughs> week. Uh, we look forward to hearing your thoughts once you actually do see it. For now, Alonzo, tell us about it. Dad told me you found something on a train during the war. A dial that could change the course of history. Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. Uh, it's 1968. And, uh, no, wait, 69. Because it's the moon right. landing. Sorry, the moon landing's happened. Sorry, it's 1969. <laughs> nice. And uh, uh, Dr. Henry Jones is finally retiring as uh, an archaeology professor. Uh, but, you know, the great work continues. He gets a surprise visit from Phoebe Wallerbridge playing his uh, goddaughter, who has some questions about an artifact that her father and Indy came upon during World War II. It's uh, this dial of Archimedes that does things they think and everybody wants to get their hands on it because no sooner does uh, Indy take her into his archives than the CIA shows up and former Nazi Mads Mikkelsen who we saw in a flashback shows up and it's uh, a lot of you know chasing and running and uh, globe trotting to get their hands on the thing that will do the other thing and uh, you know <laughs> you'd think the Nazis would learn from the Ark of the Covenant maybe don't go mucking about with powerful ancient artifacts but you know what are you gonna do Nazis um, will never learn no apparently not <laughs> So this is the first of the Indiana Jones movies not to be directed by Steven Spielberg. James Mangold uh, takes over. And there's a lot that's fun here. You know, the, these movies are sort of a tribute to the daring do of yore. The chase scenes are terrific. There's a lot of fun stuff going on here. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is terrific. She brings the sort of sass and spunk that you want to, you know, female to, to, to Indy's female co-lead to this. Um, if you're one of those people that's annoyed by Kate Capshaw getting dragged along screaming through Temple of Doom, this is a more Karen Allen-ish mm -hmm. capable heroine. Where I was less into this was the flashbacks to World War II that involve a de-aged Harrison Ford. I don't think that's oh, that what I would say. Yeah, it did. At first, it was like, oh, wow, that he looks so good. Like, they're really pulling this off. But then, like, the more you look at him and the more he's, like, chasing a train at night on a motorcycle in a scene that has a lot of other things that are also CG'd, it all started looking like the Polar Express to me. Um, <laughs> and I found that real disconcerting. And I, I just wish we could either get better at this or not do it yet. But here we are. This is a, a movie that a, a franchise that really is constantly sort of chasing the dragon to that first film. There's a lot to love about maybe not Crystal Skull, but there's a lot to love about two, three and now five. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that it's, it's always sort of an exercise in diminishing returns, but it is worth it to see on the big screen, like go opening weekend with a crowd of people who are all yelling and throwing their popcorn. You'll have a good time. I had a really good time too. And maybe part of that is because my expectations were very low. It had such a mm. muted response coming out of Cannes and it had like 50% on the tomato meter with its original reviews. I'm like, oh, is this going to suck? And then when I got there, I'm like, no, this has like the kind of craft that you see in a James Mangold movie. He makes, you know, across genres, really solid kind of old fashioned, entertaining, crowd pleasing movies, whether it's his 310 to Yuma remake or Night and Day or like Girl Interrupted is really well done. Like he, Logan, Walk the Wolverine, line. Walk the Line. He, he's a yeah. solid filmmaker in sure, a very old fashioned kind of big studio tradition. Yeah. And so he's he's doing a great job with what you want from a big summertime experience like this. There's a lot of Spielbergian camera movements and lighting here. You definitely feel his presence here in terms of just the tone and the, the visual tenor of this film. Um, and it's beautiful in a, in a lot of ways. I don't mind de-aged Harrison Ford. I thought it looked pretty good and okay. um, pretty 
not uncanny valley i thought it looked pretty good most of the time and that first chase on the train is thrilling and the chase with the horse through mm -hmm. the subway is thrilling and it gives yes. you all the things that you want in an indiana jones movie in terms of just like the scope of it like the enormity of it the complexity of it and then the funny little bits along the way yes. and like the whoo ah like <laughs> you're <laughs> you want a it. moroccan street market you got a moroccan street market <laughs> yeah for sure no all of that is, is really well done and i really like phoebe waller bridge as well i know that there is great consternation from many people about the fact that she even exists here as if everyone forgot who Karen Allen is and what her purpose was in Raiders of the Lost yes. Ark. She's meant to be this like sassy trash talker who holds her own and like can drink guys under the table who are twice her size. Like she's a badass and Phoebe Waller-Bridge now occupies a very similar space here and she's just fun. You know, yeah. I, I enjoy her in general so I'm, I'm happy to have her here. Where it falls apart for me is as it goes along and they're using the dial to do the thing they hope it will do. At that point, it just gets silly. It, it's, <laughs> I think it's meant to be really important. Like, wow, look what happens with this thing. And it feels, I don't want to say the movie that it reminds me of because that will give away <laughs> what happens. But, but it, I will it, say- It's hard we to were, take it seriously, I grant you. My friend Brian, who I brought with me and I, we were like laughing in the parking garage like about that whole moment. Cause, and I don't think it's meant to be funny. I think it's meant to be no, serious. No, it's, it is. It's like, yeah. it's a big decision for Indiana Jones in that mm -hmm. moment. And I think it's it's meant to be like have, have great Stakes. gravitas. Gravitas yes. to use a word I'm fond of. Um, and it just feels very inadvertently silly. And and then the final, final thing that happens clearly is meant to tug at our heartstrings and have a great deal of nostalgia and poignancy. And I just don't know that we ever can get back to that. I just think that what has happened in the climax is so irreparable that the little coda doesn't have the oomph that it mm. seeks. Yeah, I don't know if this was like they, they, they needed another pass on the script or something, but I, I will agree with you that it, it tries to juggle some tones that it doesn't entirely pull off and that yeah a, a moment that is clearly intended to be like poignant toward the end just is kind of like really we're doing this you know so maybe that's just going to be a you know your mileage may vary situation but <laughs> yeah i'm with you on that one yeah so this is coming out next week i mean they clearly want reviews out there they, they're showing it to us very very early yes um and of course it played at can so if you guys are going to see it let us know um i will say what's my number i'm going to say like a like a seven because it's really well made for a long time and i enjoyed it for a long time and it does all that old-fashioned swashbuckling indiana jones stuff with like you know there's the map and you see mm -hmm. like the course the line, of where they're yeah. flying like <laughs> it, it you know we talk about fan service a lot right with movies like the flash or sure. spider verse you got the hat you got the whip but they're not just like look see here's a hat and a whip like they're totally they're germane right? they're germane to, to who he is and what he does right yes. and you, you can't have an indiana jones movie without those things and so i think it does what it it needs to do for the people who love this character but it also really falls apart <laughs> yeah yeah I, i'm also a seven i i think mm -hmm. the, the 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 best parts of it make it worth seeing but it is not a consistently great experience